Yo, I know everybody is election focused right now, so I thought I'd take our minds off of it this Monday, November 2nd, 2020 in the year of our Lord to focus a little bit on the UFC fight night that happened this past Saturday on All Hallows Eve, aka Halloween. There were some interesting fights overall in the main card, so I'll touch briefly on, I think, the the lower two, and then I'll get to the main kind of three bouts, and we'll be in and out quickly here. So the first kind of bout that I watched, I didn't watch the prelims, was Tiago Moises versus Bobby Green. Spoiler alert, Tiago wins. You know, as the story goes, Tiago Moises is, uh, or Moises is the jiu-jitsu guy bobby green the striker but they were both pretty balanced in both disciplines i was not surprised when i saw how often tiago moises actually got bobby green's back but i was thoroughly impressed with bobby green's ability to get out of it i think some people on twitter were saying that they think bob would have edged out in the end nobody finished anybody and i'm not a big believer in decisions for me it should be finish or draw i don't think there are enough draws given out in the sport of mma and it's frankly too subjective i don't like leaving it in the hands of the judges kritarki is not the way to run the sport of mixed martial arts which i would also rename martial sciences or mixed martial sciences but shout out to tiago who ended up getting the overall victory on the decision then you have the very uh, strange character in the middleweights those were lightweights in the middleweights of kevin holland versus charlie uh, ontiveros and pretty early on he basically gets him in this standing grappling move that is kevin holland gets charlie ontiveros after having survived a beautiful axe kick that uh, Izzy uh, uh, Israel uh, Adesanya was uh, appreciating from the audience, he spikes Charlie Ontiveros and gets him in what looks like a, a Von Flu choke. Uh, but I'm not sure what it was exactly, but I did hear Bruce Buffer say that it was a verbal submission and tap. And then Ontiveros, who took this fight on a short notice, I believe it was three days, had to be carried out on a stretcher. After that, Kevin Holland talks a mad smack to the middleweight division and especially to the champ. You know, you got to do what you got to do to get attention. Here I am talking about him. Everybody else is talking about him. And he's likely going to get a really good fight that will set him up to be in, in those talks eventually of getting to be a ranked fighter, which he is not currently. And uh, right now, the champ of the division is uh, going to go fight Jan Blakovich. So uh, shout out to Izzy moving up to light heavyweight, trying to cement his status as GOAT. And I'm sure he'll later come back down to middleweight and taunt John Jones about eventually going back there. Then we have the heavyweight bout with Greg Hardy and Maurice Green. Uh, Greg Hardy, uh, obviously the woman beater, the uh, man who likes to take a steroid shots in between rounds with an inhaler, the man who knees a downed opponent, uh, actually did well, and he got a nice TKO on Maurice Green. He shot, uh, he showed an incredible improvement, in my opinion, in his top game grappling. I still don't know what would happen to him if somebody chose to double leg him. And there are a few good wrestlers left in the heavyweight division. So there are some people who could do that. And I'd be interested in seeing what happens if he comes across a really good submission guy. What happens if he comes across a really good uh, wrestler? In either case, I think he would be royally effed. But whenever he's gone against another striker, even if he's breathing deep in the uh, interview after, actually in that bout, uh, we haven't seen Greg Hardy loot. The striking match yet so he may be one of the best strikers in the heavyweight division we'll see how he progresses and again i think stamina and submission grappling are his main woes but his top game was great and he was definitely doing some good striking from there then we get into the uh second uh to last fight which is the featherweight bout i Calls a John Dana Hare, Eddie Bravo, Cold War. That's Mitchell, uh, Bryce Fug Nasty Mitchell versus Andre Touchy Feely. And so Andre Touchy Feely had just done, I think, either a private or a seminar or something with Gary Tonin, who's the bearer of the John D Dana Hare flag in the world of MMA. And uh, Bryce Doug Nasty Mitchell has not only studied Eddie Bravo techniques on YouTube, but has now also met Eddie Bravo. And he's here with his new swagged out camo 
uh, uh, trunks. They said the only other trunks that were customized that were given to any other UFC person was Conor McGregor. So this is definitely a feather in the hat of one Bryce Doug Nasty Mitchell. Andre Feely before the fight was saying that his grappling is actually superior and then his striking is superior. Looks like Bryce uh, agreed with him on striking and maybe if it was a Muay Thai fight or a boxing fight, uh, Andre Touchy Feely wins. But instead, Bryce Doug Nasty Mitchell showed ultra dominance i think he got a career high takedown so it shows that not only does he have the creative submission grappling game of one eddie bravo with the uh i think he's got two twisters already uh if not uh yeah i think he's got two twisters finishes or maybe just one finish and one attempt i'd have to go check that again in the ufc so in addition to that kind of beautiful ground game, his standing grappling is incredible as well. And it's interesting at this moment, John Dana Hare is doing a series of videos to improve jujitsu players standing grappling. So even though he's on the other side of the Cold War, it looks like Thug Nasty's already been paying attention. And he got a nice deserved decision victory over Touchy Feely. I think if this was a no time limit, no round match, he's either going to win from TKO of striking on the top of uh, the guard of Touchy Feely, or he's going to submit him. Uh, Bryce is a force to be reckoned with at 145 pounds. Also, 145 pounds is bullshit. They always weigh like 160 or 150. So I just like to always throw that in. Uh, Anderson, the Spider Silva versus Uriah Hall. Uh, Anderson seemed to be slowly piecing up Uriah Hall, but he is a 45-year-old man, and eventually your reflexes are going to catch up to you, and eventually Uriah Hall got a spark of confidence and dropped him. They both bowed down to each other after. It was all respect. It was all love. It was no shit talking. Uh, this could be Anderson's last fight, but maybe not. You know, He's got one more on the contract. Dana White says he's not going to fight anymore. We'll see what actually ends up happening. But I don't believe Uriah Hall when he says he's going to be kind of at the top of the heap because even when fighting an old man, it took him four rounds to finally build up the courage to start, you know, throwing his hands. So unless he has a major kind of confidence change and, and skill set change, I don't know how he plans to beat Israel Adesanya, let alone the myriad foes that he would have to beat in order to get there in the first place. Anyway, it was a fun fight night that I got to watch because of my ESPN uh, plus membership, which I think is like five bucks or six bucks a month. The bundle with like Disney and Hulu is like 12 or 13 bucks. Anyway, it was cool. Talk to y'all next time. Stay safe this week.